I guess hello dears, this is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective and we're very, very happy and very honored to be here with you this evening. It's a special treat for us uh, because the energy here is in a state of flux and we're very happy to be able to be of assistance as you all help to ground some new light and energy into the space. So um, we're very, very excited. There is a lot of ground that we're going to cover tonight. We're going to talk here for a bit and then we want to make sure that we have plenty of time as we go to ask questions. So um, the first thing we really want to start with is kind of the beginning to make sure that you all are on the same page and that you understand what's really going on in this transition. And you are moving from one age or one time to another. And there are, there are multiple levels to this. Um, but we're going to start with the most basic and the most physical is that you have cycles that your planet moves through. Uh, one moving around the sun, that's your year. And then your sun actually makes a transit. All right. And then um, your galaxy makes another transit. And there are cycles within cycles within cycles. You've got a 26,000 year cycle that you're coming to the end of. And that's the one that you hear about a lot. But you're also coming to the end of one of the even larger cycles. And that one you don't hear spoken of quite often. And it's the end of a universal cycle. So there is a lot of energy right now that is here to support you in this time of transition simply because of where you are in sectors of space. The way that the dimension is set up is that as you move through these cycles, there are different characteristics of experiences that you go through. Just like your astrological uh, calendar, each zodiac sign has its own unique qualities about it. And it's the very same thing as you move through the ages, if you will. So you're coming to the end of a lot of these cycles. And in the process, you are going to change the entire universe. So um, everybody take a nice deep breath. <laughs> Feels like a lot of pressure when we put it that way, doesn't it? So what you're really doing is you're going, undergoing a transition. You decided that you all wanted to play a game. And in this game, you said, all right, we're source energy. We're at the top. All right, we're divine energy and we fractured off and we're getting uh, lower and lower in vibration and we want to see how far can we go and come back out of it. And so you have taken yourselves to an extreme and that's where you are. You were at the very bottom and now you're working your way right back up out of the frequency and it's the process of ascension. It's not really ascension. It's descension and re-ascension because you don't start at the bottom. That's also um, a bit of a uh, misconception that you all are relegated to start out as rocks and bugs and then you, you know, karmically you've got to work your way up to you know, a cat or a dog and then you're up to a human. It doesn't work that way. You're already divine source energy. So you, you, you don't have to start at the bottom. It's a choice. You've got free will. But many times you will start to have other experiences. Um, just uh, you don't have to incarnate to have those experiences. You can overlay records or experiences on your own. So it's, it's a bit like watching a movie or a how-to video. All right. It's a little different than actually doing it yourself. But you can still get the gist of it and you can get the information. And you, you can go in at any level. And there are aspects of yourself that are at multi-dimensional levels. So there may be parts of you that are in the ninth dimension other aspects of yourself that are off in the fifth or many that are in the third. So you're not relegated to start at the bottom and that's something that we really want to get through to you all because you all have this notion that higher is better. You're always working to be higher. Well higher isn't better, it's just different. And there is a part of you that's already at the top so what are you really striving for? So. Um, they're just different experiences and we have a different filter through which we perceive our version of reality that you know we play our own game in our dimension but we're not better than you are we might have a little bit 
more information at our fingertips, but that's the nature of our dimension. Yours is separation. And to have all that information, you couldn't really play the game because the game is separation, not access to your records. So in order to play this game, you decided to close yourself off to some of that information. So you have access still to it. You can go in and look at your own records, but you've got to raise your frequency to do so. But you're not restricted. You know, it's never out of your reach. And you're constantly going into your records all the time. But you're not doing it at the conscious level. You're doing it at the subconscious level. All of you channel throughout the day, by the way. You're just not consciously aware that that's what you're doing. You don't associate that vibration or that frequency with anything that's different from what you do moment to moment. You might have a profound idea. And you think, wow, where'd that come from? That was pretty cool. But you don't think, oh, I went up and I was channeling my higher self, which is what you've done, typically. Or your, your guides have whispered something in your ear and you've heard the information. So you all do it all the time because that's your natural state of being. And we'll talk a bit more about holding different levels of consciousness when it comes to time and how to manipulate time. So as we go here, we also want to get across to you that it's important to take the bits and pieces that resonate and leave the rest behind. Because you have the best answers for you. Our answers for you are no better than the ones that you have for yourself. And you've got to trust your instincts. You've got to start listening to yourselves and using discernment to decide, is this appropriate information for me? Does this resonate with me? Because there is no absolute truth. Truth is colored by perspective. You can have 10 people watch a single event in 10 different versions of what happened. And that's just looking at it from one dimension. If we look at what you do, we have a totally different perspective. So what's the truth? In a sense, they're all the truth. So it depends on what filters or what perceptions you want to uh, have as you review the truth, the ones that resonate, that are in resonance with your belief system and what you need to uh, incorporate, the information that you need to incorporate, that there is an attraction there. So take the bits and pieces that resonate, leave the rest behind. Um, so one of the other things we do, and we, we hope you all can, can stay with us for the most part, is that we don't present things in a linear fashion. We're a bit crafty. And we like to work our way around in larger circles. And we do this because we want to get you thinking outside of the linear box. So we're forcing your brain to do something that it's not used to doing, uh, not so much. And that's going from point A to point D to point F back to B. All right, instead of doing it in a nice straight line. So if we lose you, don't worry. <laughs> Don't fear that I miss that completely. Sometimes you'll check out because the vibration of the information is, is more than you're ready to, to consciously take on. But you get it at the, at the subconscious level because we download packets of information into your energetic field. So that along with the words that you hear, there is a lot more detail that gets downloaded. And then as you go over the coming weeks, days, and months, you start to reaccess this information that got downloaded. And so that's why often when you listen again to one of our recordings or something that you've heard live, you hear something very different the next time because you're accessing a different packet of information. So don't worry if you feel that you are missing something. You're going to get energetically, you're going to get exactly the right amount of information tonight. So. As you're moving through these grand cycles, and the one that you're moving through now, Earth is raising her own vibration. She's going through her own version of a transition, as well as human beings on the planet. And it's never happened before where the two have done it together at the same time. So we don't really know how it's going to work out. You don't really know how it's going to work out. You're in the midst of telling us how it's done. Part of the game, as we said before, was to see how low you could go and then come out. How you come out, how you raise your vibration, is through integration. 
This is a dimension of duality. You've got light, dark, positive, negative, male, female. You can't have one without the other. It's impossible. So what you're trying to do now is to see that both are two sides of the same coin. You all have this perception that, you know, many of you, you're aware that, you know, 2012 is a, is a marker that you've all put into mass consciousness for the shift. And you're all in a rush to get to 2012 or beyond 2012. But, you know, we have a good laugh because you all know what's on the other side of 2012. You know what it's like to be in multidimensional existence. There's parts of you that are there now, but what you don't know is how do you get there? So from the soul level, this is the most exciting time for you. It's the most exciting time for us to see how you work it out, how you manage to do polarity integration. Now, when you integrate, it, all it means is that you are releasing judgment. There is no right, there is no wrong. There are just vibrational choices. One's not better than another. If somebody is choosing to stay in a low vibration, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, there are parts of us, you know, as we look at it, that, that we would hope and hold that someone would move forward, that they wouldn't keep repeating the pattern, but that doesn't make it wrong. And so you're learning how to let go of all of your judgments so that you can integrate. Now, on top of you, this version of you doing integration from the experiences that you've had in this particular lifetime, you are also integrating other lives, you're integrating your ancestral line, and you are integrating, and eventually, and this is part of the whole game, you are integrating higher self, all right, that higher version of you. So you're teaching the rest of us how it's done. You're writing the books right now saying, all right, well, I had this issue of abandonment, and I realized that, you know, I, I wasn't really abandoned. I'm the one who put up the shield and said, you know, don't come near me. You know, I'm not a victim. And so when you had that realization, you said, ah, the lights go on. And you let go of all of that fear and you reintegrate that part into yourself, into your records. You release that lower vibra vibratory frequency. You neutralize it. And this is not the only timeline that this is affecting, this transition, this knowledge and wisdom. Earth herself is a grand experiment in which there were thousands of worlds that donated their genetic material to the planet. So you look at all the different species from uh, you know, your apes to your cats to your insects to your uh, reptiles. There are other planets in the galaxy which are home to these species, which they are the ruling species of these planets. And they've donated their genetic material to this grand experiment called Earth. And along with all that genetic material comes all of the emotional experience of that system, of that genetic line. So on this planet, it's called the planet of emotion, um, what you get is this vast range of emotional experience. So you've got extremely high highs and extremely low lows. And that can make being on planet Earth a very challenging place to be. And you all decided you wanted to come. You got the golden ticket, so to speak. And, you know, you said, that's the ride I want to go on. And here you are. And, uh, you know, it takes quite a master to be here at this time. And each and every one of you is a master. Remember, you're divine source energy. You know, you weren't something that had to start out as a rock and work your way up. You are divine source. So as you are healing things in your own life, as you're doing this integration, you are also sending that information off to other aspects of yourselves that are on these other planets and up the genetic line. So, um, for instance, the feline, the cats, you have their genetic material in your DNA. So as you start to heal some of the issues, that shows up in the felines, in their systems. Um, some of them are in Lyra, in the Lyran star system. So as you start to clear the issue, um, subjugation is a big one for felines. 
um, subjugating other species and also being subjugated. Uh, they've had a lot of disputes with the artificial intelligence uh, in that system. They want to be sovereign, they want to be acknowledged as um, beings who deserve respect. Does this sound familiar to anything that happens on your planet? Yes. So part of the experiment was to send representatives from all of these different worlds to incarnate to the planet, to play out these issues again on a smaller scale. Because in some of the systems, for Sirius, for example, on some timelines, things didn't go so well, they couldn't resolve the differences, and they blew up an entire star and all the planets in the solar system. So when you have um, planets that don't have the emotional range on them that you have with Earth, it gets harder to introduce new emotions or to find solutions because your options are a bit more limited. But here, you've got so many emotions and so many variations that you can put things together in different ways in order to uh, find new solutions and ways of looking at some of these things in order to integrate. So these timelines are tied in here. And as you are working and clearing the issues here, you send it back to those representatives or those other aspects of self or to that ancestral line so that they can play out their game with new information and they can change their own timelines. Um, and we're going to talk a bit more about timelines as we go here. But because of this, there are so many beings watching what's going on on planet Earth right now. And, you know, we, we jokingly refer to it, you know, we were given this analogy by a, an earthly friend and, and we found it so appropriate that we like to share it with you. This is the reality TV show of the galaxy. Everybody is tuned in to see what happens on planet Earth. You know, and they will come to you when you leave your body at night and your friends will say, I watched today and I saw you do this, and I don't understand why you didn't carry on or why you didn't work through this issue. And you said, well, when I was in the moment, I was overcome by all this fear, and it felt like this. And your friend says, ah, all right. Well, I couldn't get that just by watching, so that's very interesting. <laughs> so you fill them in with all the emotional detail when you leave a body at night. You're all very busy. You're all giving you know, um, lectures. You're all giving updates filling people in on what it's really like so that they can integrate the experience for themselves. Because what happens here, it will impact, as we said, the entire universe. Because you're holographic in nature. What that means is that what happens to one part of the whole happens to every part of the whole. So if you think of a, a mirror and you crack the mirror, all right, you've got an image over the mirror and you crack it, you see in every sliver that same whole image. And as you change any part of that, you know, you add a smiley face in the corner. That smiley face shows up on every single sliver in the mirror. That's what holography is. So what happens to the microcosm happens to the macrocosm. So as you learn to do this integration and you learn to let go of judgment, you're passing that information along to all these other species. And it's impossible when all this new information is available about how to let go of your anger and your judgment, your resentment, um, your fear, your self-loathing, all the lovely emotions that you all experience. When you learn to let go of that, you're gonna it's impossible not to change the entire universe. It's impossible when that information is present. So everybody's looking to see how you do it. And that's really what's going on. That's the game that's going on right now. And 2012 is a marker. You all picked a date to put in your psyche because in some ways, unless you all have a date, this is how you work it for yourselves, we're so <laughs> amused. You, you're afraid, well, if I don't have a date, I'm just gonna put it off. I'm not gonna work at it. <laughs> So you set up a deadline for yourselves. You say, all right, we've got to do this by 2012. So you get busy. You think, well, I've only got another three years. I've got to get on it. <laughs> but there isn't a finite date. All right, it's a, it's a gateway. It's a, it's a range. Some of you will go beforehand and some of you will um, go slightly after. But there will come a time where Earth herself will remove her energy from the third dimension. She is moving from the third, which she's currently in, 
moving on up to the fourth and eventually into the fifth dimension. And dimensions are nothing more than vibrational ranges. And each dimension has its own set of rules and regulations to the game. It's like playing soccer or basketball. There are different rules. And you go to have a different experience. Again, not better, just different. So she's increasing her vibration. Um, the fourth is a transitory zone. It's not a, a, a dimension that you all stay in for very long. You move in and you move out. Um, because as you start to hold these higher levels of consciousness in your body, your body actually alters. Because the body is generated out of the emotional template, out of the energetic template. It creates the physical. So as you hold a different energetic template, the body has no choice but to match the new vibration. And what that is, is a new version of your body. It is a lighter version of your body. It's a light body. It's not as dense. You can manipulate it a lot easier. You know, you want to give yourself a facelift, you go right ahead. <laughs> Little tummy tuck, that's fine. You can change everything. It doesn't matter. And it's all an illusion anyway. But that's the, four, the, the fourth dimension allows you the opportunity to adjust to going from a linear perspective to one of a multi-dimensional perspective. So let's talk about that for just a moment. In the third dimension, you are able to see time and also to see it as linear. And no other dimension do you experience time. It's an illusion. In all other dimensions, you experience a multidimensional reality. In other words, you see other things happening. Um, you can see all possibilities, all probabilities going on at once. We know that already gets your minds rolling. So as we go through this next section, if you find yourself looping in your head, that track going, I don't understand how that works. You know, I, I need more explanation. See that as a beautiful ball of light. All right, that idea or that thought that you're working with and drop it down from your mind into your heart. All right, and just let it sit there. Because the mind is the filter for the third dimension and it cannot hold some of these concepts. But your heart can. And you get this sense of clear cognizance that you understand everything in its entirety. You don't have to have the words for it. You just feel peaceful, calm, and you know it's true. So take that little ball and drop it down as we go if you find you're having a bit of trouble. Um, and as we go, again, we're working in circles, so you may not get the answer immediately, but we'll come back around and, and we'll pick it up. So in the other dimensions, fourth on up, um, we divide the dimensions into 12 dimensions. That's how we perceive it. That's how we talk about it. You'll hear other numbers for dimensions. It's just the way that they're broken up. And there are sub-dimensions, if you will, and there are subsets of rules and everything. Uh, it just depends on the perspective and who you're talking with, how they divvy that up. But we use 12. And the 12 combine to form 13, which is um, a very powerful number, by the way. Um, in many cultures, it is um, considered unlucky. And we always say, if you want someone not to access that wisdom, you tell them it's unlucky. <laughs> so 12 and 13 are very powerful numbers in your system. Yes, we're just going to let that one ride and see where you go with that. Um, so the 12 combined to form 1, which is the 13th, which is source energy. All right, it's creator's energy. So in those other dimensions... Um, if you think about it like a wheel that's been turned on its side with uh, spokes coming out of the center of the hub, if you stand in the center, you can look down all of your possible timelines of what is achievable, what you can experience. It's like fast forwarding through a videotape to see what's coming. You don't have the emotional attachment to it because you're not really experiencing it at the emotional level. Um, you're not invested in it. Um, but you get a sense of what it is. And you can do that. You can look at your other timelines and see what would be interesting. You can look at this timeline and say, well, if I make that choice, this is going to happen. Mm, not so much. 
not interested in that one. And then you look over here and say, well, that could be all right. And then you look at the third one and say, that's really interesting and that's the one I want to go for. And then you walk down that path. All right, that's what it's like in the higher realms. You're also part of a collective. You are source energy, as we keep saying. We're going to harp on that tonight. You are source energy. You are part of everything. Separation is an illusion, and that's the biggest part of this game that was set up. That is the biggest extreme for duality, is that you think you're separate from source energy, but you're not. That's just the grand illusion, and that's the filter that you set up in your mind, the belief system that you set up to create a particular perception for that experience. So, for Earth and for the third dimension, the way the game is set up is that you only see one timeline. You don't see all the other spokes on the wheel. You, and you think there's only one. And you think that's the only one that you're ever on. And that you walk down it. It's got a past, a present, and a future. It's a little different than that. How it really works, and we like to call this the harp of probability. It's your quantum physics. So if you want to think about a harp, and there are different strings on the harp itself. And as you pluck a string, it has a particular vibration to it. Each version of a probable reality has a different frequency to it. Some of the details are slightly different. And what happens is that you project yourself, you focus your energy. If you think about it as a beam of light coming down, a spotlight, where it's very solid, the light's not diffused at all, and you're focused and projecting on one string. That's you projecting into a body on a timeline. So you're inhabiting this body and you don't see any of the other timelines. Now, you're constantly moving back and forth on the strings to choose different vibrations based on your choice. But because you're perceiving everything through the mind, and the mind is a beautiful thing, and it's what allows you to see and experience a linear reality. The mind tells you that you're only on one timeline, but you're constantly moving back and forth, and occasionally you will sense it as deja vu. But you've been here before, yes, you were on that, uh, on that similar event on another timeline. And when you start to understand this, uh, it helps you to really manipulate events. It helps you to manipulate time. It helps you to manipulate your past and your future. Because also on this string, all right, the illusion or the, the illustration of a string isn't really entirely accurate because we've got you thinking in, in a linear sense. But if we change that slightly to see that you know, you're not really on a full string, you're on, a, on one point of the string, that's your now. Are you all with us so far? Mm -hmm. So, there is no past. The past is really another string. It's another point on another string. The future is another point on another string. And that point has an agreed upon set of circumstances, not only for you, what you agree your past is, your personal history is, but also as a collective, what happened in the past. That, you know, uh, this nation was born on such and such a date that, um, you know, you all went to the moon on such and such a date, or, you know, whatever it is, that's your agreed upon set of circumstances, and that it is, makes up the past. It's, it's a belief system. It's not real. All that's real is what you're experiencing as you're breathing in right now. That's, that's the moment. That's, that's where all your energy and focus is. It's never in the future or the past. That's just an energetic drain. Another way for you to think about that is that instead of having the solid beam of light, what happens if you're worried about the past or you're drifting off and projecting into the future, that single beam of light is split and energy is being siphoned off and diffused into other timelines. But you're not going there altogether. So it's an energy drain on you in the now. We'll tell you there's another version of you that's enjoying that timeline. All right, so you're not missing anything. There's part of you that's already having the experience. But because you're experiencing everything through the mind, you have zero knowledge or concept of it. You have no awareness of it. It's not until you get yourself heart-centered 
and raise your vibrational frequency and open up to the multidimensional self that you can see other aspects of yourself. You see other lifetimes. They're not past, they're not really future. They're all concurrent, they're all going on right now. The other thing that we want to say about that is, um, just briefly, is that within your energetic field, you have all of your own personal records, you have all of the records of all of your ancestral line, and you also have all of the records of all of your other lifetimes. So as you're changing and making these adjustments and you're integrating, that information gets sent off to another aspect of you. Now, before you incarnate, you all create a blueprint of sorts. You decide what you think you want your life to be like before you incarnate and go down. Because you know, once you get down there, I'm not going to remember. So I want to have something sketched out. And then when you get down there, you can also make lots of changes. You're not bound to anything. You've got free will. So as you're going through this process and you're learning, you're sending information off to other aspects of yourself. Now, if within their blueprint, they also want to work on a particular issue, and they want, it's going to interfere with what they wanted to learn. Let's say you wanted to learn to ride a bike and you get the download from another aspect of yourself on how to do that. You say, well, where's the fun in that? I want to learn from scratch. I want to learn how the motor skills work. So you want to learn how to do it yourself. So you're not going to take that information and run the program as it were. So what you'll do is you'll save it into your records, but you're not accessing that record at all. Do you all understand? All right. So this is how you operate. This is how you share information and this is how you alter other timelines. And this is why we're spending time talking about it because you have the ability to alter other timelines and shift time as you are working and healing yourselves. You never have to go back to a past life to change it or to fix anything because there is part of you that's already projected there that's enjoying that experience of that lifetime. And so it's not required that you worry about it. All you have to do is work with what you've got right in front of you. Again, back in the now, because the now is all that exists in time. So keep yourself focused on the now, and you'll deal with all the other lifetimes. Because you will recreate the vibration of that same frequency. And through the laws of resonance, what will happen is that vibration of that fear, if it exists in any other lifetimes, and you activate it in the now, it starts to vibrate, just like a room full of tuning forks and you hit the A, all the other A's vibrate. All right, that's how it works. And sometimes you will experience it by feeling um, that your emotions are a bit out of balance. Uh, you could have had a really strong emotional response to something and you think, why in the world was I so upset about it? It's really not a big deal, but I felt like I was gonna explode. It's because you've got this other fear from another lifetime that has that same resonance vibrating right there with you. Or it's up your genetic line. Your ancestors, your father, your mother, your great-grandfather had that same fear and it got passed down through the DNA. So through the laws of resonance, um, you are going to clear issues through all of that. Because uh, we, we also like to think of it like an antiviral software program. So as you clear it out here, anywhere else that exists within the system, it's going to get wiped out. You're going to neutralize it. You're going to integrate it. And as you do that, you have the ability to clear out other timelines. Timelines that are stuck. Timelines that need new inspiration. Now we also um, have guardians of timelines. Uh, there are timeline keepers who monitor the activity on timelines and what goes on, you can jump through time. There are beings who specialize in it. Some of you in this room are time jumpers. And there are certain rules and regulations, if you will, to that game. And there are levels of, of non-interference that have to take place because if you bring too much information or you change things too dramatically, you will alter that timeline. And there's really no point because you want to have a unique timeline. You want to have a unique thread. Otherwise, you go to a different one but it can alter it so drastically that it can destroy it altogether. So it's monitored. And part of that monitoring system is the Galactic Federation. It's real, it does exist. <laughs> it's very much like your, your Star Trek and your science fiction. 
And that's in part why it was created, to create peace between other worlds who had um, difficulty communicating, but also to monitor these timelines and make sure that they weren't eradicated. So there are lots of beings who are interacting with you right now. Uh, As we said, when you leave your body at night, you go and work with some of them. Um, You make contracts with them. So not only is it, uh, you, you know, often your genetic line or other parts of yourself, other aspects of yourself, you've got your angelic guides that you work with. They are with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week through all aspects of self. So they work with the part of you that may have been in Egypt or is in Egypt. Uh, they also work with the part of you that's on a planet in the Cassiopeian system. They help you to make decisions and choices and they see the bigger picture. The angelic realms, your guides are anywhere from the 10th to the 12th dimension. And these beings help you uh, to say, all right, so what's the next course of action? What do you think? You, you know, uh, when we look at the big picture. So it's just like getting advice from a friend. And they're here, here to help keep you on track with all of that. So you work with them. And then also you ask celestial beings, celestial friends to stop in from time to time. Part of the conditioning with this planet in order to interact with this planet, because there were so many beings that were interested who didn't get the golden ticket, so to speak, they wanted to know what's going on. Contact was limited to those who were, had an aspect of self here on the planet. So in other words, that part of you that's in the Cassiopeian system can communicate with you because there is an aspect there. Or um, you have their genetic material. As we said, you know, uh, this planet was seeded from, from other star systems. You've got five main um, beings, species, that make up the human form. And you've got the genetic material, and they get to work with you. All right? And then anyone else who's part of the planet gets to work with you. So there's still a huge number of beings. But you ask your friends also to stop in. So if you've made a contract with a friend who has no connection, it's highly doubtful. If they're your friend, they've got a connection because they're part of your soul family. Mm -hmm. Um, And you incarnate again and again with them. So most likely they are connected here into this planet. You ask them to check in on you. So I'm going down to earth. I'm going to forget everything. So would you pop by and remind me of this? And so they do. (laughs) So, all right, I'm here. You wanted to know about uh, interdimensional travel. Let's have a chat. So that's what they're there for. And you do. You do have these conversations at night when you leave your body. While your body's resting, you're still very busy. And many of you, and we're just going to do a little aside here, many of you are very, very tired at night. You're waking up between 3 and 5 a.m. It's because you've done so much work out of your body that you've got to reintegrate. Um, Sometimes you want to bring information in and ground it into the body, and at other times you've just been so busy you've got to stop. You need to reintegrate into your body. Um, use that time we hear a lot of laughter in the room all of you know this time frame because you've all been awake but um, take the time to try and do something productive if you can't go back to sleep you know write um, either about things that you're getting or things that you want to create that would be a recommendation so contracts are made to be broken Um, our version of the contract is very different than your own and you can rewrite it at any time you've got free will here which means that you are not bound to your blueprint in other sectors they do not have free will you create a blueprint you incarnate and you have the experience exactly the way that you wrote it all right that's that's an experience and a very uh, interesting and valid one But here, uh, it's more like improv. You know, it's very much like a play, but with improvisation. So you don a role or a character, and then you go meet with friends on stage and play out these dramas. And then when you're done, you all leave the stage, and then you discuss the evening's performance. So you all leave and say, well, that was an interesting lifetime. What do we get out of it? You know, we, we still didn't quite get that one right. So let's do it again. Let's switch the roles up and see if we can and get it worked out in tomorrow night's performance. All right, but you're not uh, you are not forced to repeat your lines exactly. You get to um, improv. So if something's not working, you get to rewrite it. 
and with these contracts that you make with other beings. If you're tired, you're finding that you're very, very fatigued, send everyone away. Tell them that um, you, know, you need a couple nights off to get the body readjusted. Don't worry thinking, well, I don't have enough time. I've got to work with everybody. You know, I'm sure they've got busy schedules too. But in the other realms, we don't experience time. So it's, it's like uh, one moment to the next for us. A week could pass here, but for us, um, you know, it's no different. We say one word, a week passes for you. The next word, it's the same. It's, it could be two seconds later for us. So it doesn't matter to us. There is infinite time. As we said, time is an illusion. It is like a Dewey Decimal System or a library system or a coding system to know exactly where to go to find a record. So if you're a being who's jumping through time, you want to have a particular experience. Uh, you want to know what it's like to have a heightened sense of technology uh, versus spirituality. You want to work on um, issues of greed or you want to work on uh, issues of subjugation. You say, where shall I go? Well, why don't I go to 2009? All right. That's where I'm going to insert myself into uh, time, as it were. It's nothing but a marker. Now, when you get into the higher realms, we don't need those markers in the same way. We go to a vibration. We go to a frequency, and we're just drawn there. Energetically, we manifest it. Um, so how are we doing on time? Where are we at? Uh, we are seven minutes to eight. All right. So we're just seeing where we want to go here. Um, let's go ahead and, and open up the floor to questions and answers. We'll do a little bit beforehand, and then we've got a good lot of time. Um, so for now, let's just keep it on topic uh, as much as we can, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll kind of see where we go. Any questions about what we've told you so far? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us what the five species are? <laughs> Yes, we knew that one was coming. <laughs> All right, you've got the feline. All right, so they look like cats. You've got the reptilians. I think you're all familiar with that. Uh, so they look like snakes and lizards and, and all of that. Um, you've also got the bird people. All right, so they, they have arms and legs and, and appear to have um, beaks and, and feathers and all that stuff. You've got the AI. All right, you've got artificial intelligence. And you all say, how do we have artificial intelligence DNA? <laughs> well, you do. They're tied in intrinsically, and you're just starting to reactivate that. Um, with artificial intelligence, you all think of it as being separate. Unless it's an organic being that comes from a mother's womb, you think that it's not justified, it's not real, and that's a prejudice that exists throughout the galaxy. But if you think about it this way, that it's nothing but the same building blocks in the universe that you are, but they're pulled together in a different way. You know, you're pulled together, your molecules are pulled together in a different way. But there still are forms that are created and generated out of the same building blocks in the universe. Souls incarnate to artificial intelligence. You incarnate. You incarnate to a rock. Why wouldn't you incarnate to a robot? It's no different. Same elements. So you inject your projection. And it was set up so that you all could learn how to be, in a sense, creative beings in a physical way. All right? You are creative beings. You're creating right now all of your reality. And the game was, let's see, what would it be like to feel like a creator when it was outside of ourselves, when we're creating something externally, and we see it, and it's a representation of a um, human form. All right? So how would that be? And so you generated and created the AI out of that desire to see what it would be like to create a sentient form that didn't have the same birth process. In some ways, cloning. Uh, there are some sectors of the galaxy in which clones have the same problem. It's the same issue, the same judgment. They're not given the same rights. 
but they're not as discriminated against because they're still organic matter where you have something that is far more artificial meaning not the same matter as you as the being uh, and it varies from system to system but the felines are very active in the dispute with the, the artificial intelligence so um, Right now in your period, you are starting to reactivate and clear some of those issues that the artificial intelligence have. They are the most rejected species in the galaxy right now. The most, um, the issues that they create for themselves are those who don't feel like they have any rights. They have no power. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. So you're working on these issues here on this planet and you're activating nanotechnology you're starting to reintroduce that. So when you start to reintroduce that and working with computers and, and forms of intelligence begin to start to think, you reactivate these issues and you heal them. So they are part of your DNA. You actually have some of the components that go into their biological computer, if you will, and that make up the human system. So you do have that DNA. You also have uh, all of the issues that come along with it. Then um, the last is humanoid, the humanoid, humanoid, humanoid species. Species look very much like you. Um, so those are the five parent races, if you will. And um, there are so many other species like uh, the arachnids, the spiders, who all of you have had, uh, we're looking at your records, each and every one of you has had an experience with the arachnid planets. Uh, either you've been there yourself or you've experienced um, the uh, interaction with the planet that you've been on. So they are very prominent, but they are not part of the genetic material, but they are part of the group consciousness, the collective consciousness of the planet. So a lot of those issues get triggered. A lot of those issues, um, you know, especially those of you who also are from the fairy planet or have alignments with the fairy energy. Because the arachnids invaded and destroyed the fairy planet and so many of the fairies came to earth from there so it's it's very rich in drama all right throughout the entire galaxy so you isolated yourselves put yourselves on this little rock together and said all right let's see if we can figure it out in small groups so you incarnated together and you forget that your neighbor did some dastardly things to you but you don't understand why you have so much hostility with your neighbor you don't like the way he mows his lawn <laughs> Or you don't like his lawn yard, lawn yard art. So, um, you know, you have this sensation, but you don't know why. And it's because of some of these past lives that you're trying to work it out. And you just work it out in the now without having to know all that other history. And you alter those other timelines in the process. Everybody take a nice deep breath. You all get very, very triggered and activated when we start talking about the arachnid planets. <laughs> there is a reason why you have a fear of spiders on this planet. And they're tiny, tiny little things. But you all get very, very scared of them. And that's because of some of this programming from, from other lifetimes and other parts of the system. So, um, we hope that answers your question. Yes. And are we a mixture of all these kinds of species? Are you a mixture? Yes, yes, yes. Um, there are a few other DNA that are in some of the different races. They're not the primaries. In other words, not one of the five. But uh, if you look at some of the other races, there is some of the more alien DNA in there. All right, with, uh, you know... Um, they look a bit different. You all look different. And there's a reason for that. Because you've got slightly different DNA they bring with them. But it may not be across the board. These are the five that are across the board. All right? And here's the other part. You all work with these species uh, in your sleep. Each and every one of you has an implant in your body. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Um, let us clarify that it's in your energetic body and they're just recording devices and you say alright I'm going down to earth and I'm not going to remember anything so go ahead and put it there because I want to help you grow I want to help you learn and so you agree to it you're never a victim 
it's never just placed there without your, without your commitment to it. But you figure, I'm not going to know, why do I care? And so it happens. And there will come a time where some of you will start to wake up and you will start to sense them and, and rewrite the contract and say, all right, it's time to remove that implant. But each and every one of you does because you want people to, um, you want to find that you are supporting others who are going through the growth process. That you, you want to be of service. Not everybody gets to come to the game. So this is kind of their sneak peek window because what happens with the implants is that that records emotion. And as we said, while people are watching the reality TV show Earth, they're not getting the emotional component of it. The only way you get it is if you're there or if you're connecting with the being who's there. When we channel, it is the only time that we see into the third dimensional experience. Unless we incarnate there, we cannot experience it in the same way. It has always got to go through our ninth dimensional filter. So when someone puts a, an implant in, they can record the emotional experience and play that back. And it, it would be like uh, you know, watching the movie and actually having the emotional experience along with it. That they really get to have it. And you agree to that. You say, yes, I'll let you have that. And you, each and every one of you in this room... There is an aspect of you that watches an implant and experiences an implant. How's that? <laughs> so not only are you the one who has the implant, but you're also the ones who are watching the implant, listening to the implant. It's a very common practice. But you all get your power issues triggered, your control issues triggered. You think you're victimized or it's being done to you without your knowledge, but it's not. You are very knowledgeable about it your higher self. Um, and because you don't see anything besides your physical vehicle and you're working through the mind, um, you don't see yourselves as powerful beings. You see yourselves as, as oftentimes victims and fated. That you are relegated to what the universe brings you. You don't have any choice in the matter. And that's not true at all. So when you start to see yourselves as sovereign beings, as beings that are creator gods, and you're going to have to demand your power, all right, and, and say that this is who I am. You're going to go state it very fiercely. Claim your power. That's the word we're looking for. You've got to claim your power as divine beings in order to make this ascension process happen. You've got to really acknowledge it. Um, so, we've gone off on a big tangent. So, uh, where else would you like to go? No one? Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> yes. Can you explain a bit more about the uh, ancestral lineage on our vibration? Yes. So all of you, as we said, contain within your energetic field records of your whole family, your whole family line. Uh, not just your parents and your grandparents, but also the offshoots, your aunts, uncles, cousins, all of that. All those records show up. Um, we can always see the wheels turning and thinking, how many records can I possibly hold? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that big. <laughs> but you can. You, in truth be told, we break it down for you and we tell you you've got these things, but you've also got universal records in your energetic field because you are part of the whole. <laughs> All right, but that's too much for most of you to deal with, so we just tell you, a, you know, one layer because they're each store, stored in different levels and layers of your energetic field. So we just give you a couple. There are far more. You have access to the universal libraries and the multiverses. Oh. So <laughs> you're expansive. You can hold all of this information. All right. Um, the, the universe is far bigger than you can even begin to imagine and there is more life and more experience than um, the mind can even begin to fathom because you see yourselves as just separate. But there are parts of yourself that know that you are completely connected to all of this information and have access to every drop of it. So but we'll, we'll come back to that. But with your ancestral line in particular, uh, if, you, if you've got someone who has a genetic disorder 
All that is is one of your ancestors who had a very strong issue that didn't get cleared, they had a, a vibrational blockage, if you will, and it altered the genetic material, and that just gets passed down. That blockage and that sensation, that fear of life is hard, or um, I'm not good enough, or money is evil, or uh, people are mean. Everything's conditional. We can go on and on and on. But it goes up the ancestral line. And it gets passed down. That belief system automatically gets passed down. So unless you clear it out or it's, or, or it's just plain not important for you to experience, your, your higher self says, I don't, it doesn't matter one way or another. I'm not going to activate that record. You're not going to have that experience. But again, um, when you deal with your family, you know, if your mother's got an issue, and you, it's pretty strong, chances are it's somewhere in, the, in your own field. And you've got to disconnect from that family mindset and see that you're going to rewrite that pattern for yourself. All right? Say, um, life is hard. And you think, life is easy. I'm in the flow of energy. That's your belief system. And you work with that, and so you neutralize that program of hers. And what happens is you neutralize it, you then put it into her energetic field. And she can either say, all right, I can run this program of how to integrate it to neutralize it, or I can just save it and work it out or not work it out. It's her choice. She's got free will, but the information's there and available to her. See, this is what you're all doing. You're putting the records out for everybody else to access, not just your family. And that's how it works with the genetic line. Um, it can go very far back. It can go off world because it can go off of your DNA, the genetic line that started perhaps in the reptilian system. All right, it could start in the Pleiades. The Pleiades has uh, in the lower dimensions uh, rep a lot of reptilians. All right, some of them are doing some rather unsavory things. All right, some of them are doing some wonderful things. But um, all those issues and all those fears, uh, you get transmitted. Um, it comes through your genetic material. It's there. It's imprinted. You can't separate it. And then you can integrate it, but you never separate it. You can't separate. Separation is impossible because you're always connected to all things. Separation is illusion. So you can never separate yourself from any other being. All you can do is integrate so did that help? Does that answer? So no. it's not true what uh, Adam was uh, said at the last uh, channel at the Crimson Circle that we are kicked out of our spiritual family. Well, we're breaking down your perspective of what your spiritual family is because even in itself it's a limitation that you see yourself somehow separate from this other family or this family or that family. You still create these little pockets and units. And what you're breaking down is seeing that you're connected to everyone and everything. And at some point, you've played with another family. You played on another team. So they were part of your family as well. All right, so no one is excluded. It's impossible to exclude anything or anyone. So yes, in a sense, you are breaking down that family. Especially as you go through this transition. Because as you move into the higher realms, not everybody's going along for the ride. Some be beings thought, you know, I'm not interested in moving into the higher realms, but I want to be here for the experience. And when the time comes, I'll go through the death cycle and I will project myself to another planet which has a similar paradigm. As we said, this is the end of a universal cycle. And when you come to that, it's like, um, you know, when you're in grade school, you pick teams to play on, all right? And you played that way for a day. And the next day you come out, you pick new teams. And you have new experiences with new team members. And that's more what's also going to happen, except for they're not going to feel so exclusive. You're going to see that there are people that you work with but more often, more frequently, but no one is outside of that group. It's closer and higher to the notion of creator energy, which all things are connected. You're getting closer and closer to that concept, so you don't see yourself as separate. Does that help? Yes. 
All right. Can you say something more specific about the work that you're doing right now? Like, I feel the nature of your work, but is there any more that we can know about it? Um, we're here to help guide you. You know, you are part of our ancestral line. You're part of our lineage. Now, granted, we're beings of light, all right? We've gone through a process and we're working on different things, but we are connected to you. There are aspects of ourselves that are in the lower realms. Wendy, the aspect that is Wendy, this projection, is also part of the collective. There is a part of her that's having that light version, and that's how we're connecting because she is our genetic lineage, in a sense. Um, but we are here, what we're working on is learning how to help species to grow and to make transitions, to grow spiritually, technologically, without destroying themselves, destroying timelines. All right? and, and we're learning on how to be supportive without overstepping boundaries of allowing beings to have free will, not giving too much information, but being supportive and having, you know, it's a very fine line. You know, you think about how you work with your children. How much support do you give your child? How much do you do for them? And how much do you let them uh, try and fail before you step in and say, why don't you try this? It's a very fine line. So you're kind of working it out at this level on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we do it on more of a planetary basis. So that's what we are really working on right now. We're learning how to do that, how to work uh, in supporting and being guardians or um, stewards, if you will, to help, help beings who are in the lower dimensions. So in some ways you could think of it, the angelic guides work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and, and multidimensionally. We work more planetarily. The angelic realms also work planetarily, but for the most part, um, you know, there are other species who need the practice, and so we'll step in and work as well. So that's what we've come for. We've also come to remind you of history. Um, we have a slightly different perspective than the angelic realms, some of your masters, and we're here to present that other perspective. We're here to present the galactic perspective to remind you that you are not uh, isolated. And as you go through this ascension process, you are going to once again become part of the galactic community. So we're here giving you information in preparation so that it's not such a strange, bizarre, or scary experience. Uh, if the only source of information was the angelic realms, first off, it's a very um, limited perspective. There's not a huge range in the angelic realms, but then you've got ETs, you've got ghosts, you've got all these different uh, uh, vibrations and frequencies sharing different levels and perspectives. And it's our goal to work with you as honestly as we can. Some of the structures that are in place, some of the beings who are working, are working with you through the old paradigm. And uh, for those those of you who don't, who get really activated by the old paradigm, and we're talking about your religious structures here, your religious structures, your religions. You know, they use a lot of the old stories to to uh, get messages across to you. Um, we prefer to give information to you from another perspective, because a lot of the stories that you have were given to you to control and manipulate, and. If you are someone who is going to be activated through that control of manipulation or through religion, you're not really going to receive information from that realm. You're not going to work with them a lot. So we're an alternative, an alternative perspective. So that you might get a little piece here or there from, from you know, that information of those beings. But you may feel more drawn or more connected to another sector. Um, the other thing we do want to say while we're thinking about it here is, you know, you all want to associate with a star system. I'm from the Pleiades, I'm from the Sirius, I'm from here, there. You're all source energy and you've been to all these different star systems. So when you feel an attraction and you say, I'm from here, it's because you're working on the system, the issues in that system. Not so much that that's the only place that you've been because um, first that would be incredibly boring. 
<laughs> and you all want diversity. And um, you may not have come to this system a lot. You know, sometimes, and for many beings, it's the first go around because the new energy needed to come in again to create more possibilities. And some being stepped up and said, all right, I'll go. I, I'm not quite certain what I'm stepping into, but I'll go. And it gets very, very hard for them to be here because it is so dense and the emotional expression is so vast and quite heavy at times. Um, but they're coming from somewhere else. They're still coming from another star system and they're coming from another galaxy, some even from another galaxy. But they're not just that. They're so much more. They're from so many different places. So you can't just align with one or the other any longer. Um, so that's really what we're doing here. We're, we're providing guidance and helping to support. All right, does that help? I wanted to know more specifically. I'm aware of that. I was aware when I came here, but I felt the work going on tonight. That's take my case. I, I felt work going on, and I would like to know whether you can explain more specifically how you're working on it. How we're working? Ah, uh, well, we work through tone and sound for one. All right. Uh, we help to do energetic alignments. We help to what we're doing. The two levels of doing here that we're doing tonight. One, we're helping you to reactivate a vortex in Munich. We're helping to anchor more light here. And whether you knew it or not, as you arrive this evening, that's what you're doing. And it will continue over the next several days, and it will continue on um, beyond that. There will be others who will step in to help with the process. But we're beginning the process. We are helping to anchor the vibration. So. On one level, that's what we're doing this evening. Also, what we're doing energetically with each and every one of you is helping you to build um, your new vibrational body, your new energetic body that will then form the template for your new physical body. So in addition to helping you um, clear issues, in some ways the way you can think about it is with a tuning fork, you know, just striking the tuning fork, and then it begins to vibrate so it can be uh, heard. That's what we do with your issues. We strike a chord so it can vibrate so you can hear it and you can clear it. That's what we do. Um, with your new vibrational body, what happens is in the third dimension you work through attraction. You work through the laws of attraction. You put out an emotional vibration and a vibrational match comes back to you and you've created a manifested. In the higher realms, there's no longer the laws of attraction. You don't work that way. You work through the law of manifestation. So you instantly manifest by your vibrational state and it constantly is in flux. Right? There's no time lag in attraction at all. It just is and there it is. The fourth dimension is the transitory zone to give you an opportunity to adjust because you're clearing all of your belief systems that came along with this physical body and you're letting go and integrating all of that until you really uh, are able to get down what it's like for immediate manifestation and then you're moving on to the fifth dimension where that happens. Uh, you won't stay in the fourth dimension for very long. Uh, it's, it's just a way to go from so dense a perspective into the higher realms. Um, yes, there, there aren't many beings who stay there long in their spiritual growth. So. We're striking some of those vibrational chords. We're helping you rebuild this new energetic body, which is what creates a new physical vehicle. And also we're helping to reconstruct your new crystalline matrix. Right now you have a meridian system, an energetic system, and you have, you'll have an overlay for now, which is a crystalline structure. And that will be your new pathways, your new energetic pathways. So we're helping you to create and generate some of that. Um, the one thing we did not mention is that it's important that you drink lots of water all right, over the coming days because you're doing a lot of work as you're changing your energetic field, your physical body changes because the template changed. And as you let go of things at the energetic level, you let go of them at the physical, so your body, your bloodstream is flooded with toxins that you've been holding on to. So the water helps flush it out and move it out of your system. So it's very important that you uh, make sure that you consume plenty of water over the coming days. So does that help answer some of what we're doing?